Okay. Um, well, once you download and install your Jira, again, for those who missed it on the very first day of class, because I, I shared the link for you to just click, I shared it through WhatsApp to click and download that. If you miss that, I don't mind reposting. Um, let's assume that you've downloaded. It should walk you through the steps to finally um, create a sprint, uh, create your project. One thing that I like to remind people or tell our new people like new team members is Jira, Azure DevOps, all these tools are easier to use than your phone. And it's the truth. I'm not saying that to make you feel better, but that is the truth. And the reason why I say I think it's easier to use than your phone is because let's say you're trying to do something, you know, for example, as you download that tool, they would ask you if you want to, if your, your project is a Scrum project or it can, they are giving you options to pick from. So they're giving you all the steps to follow, which all you have to do is just clicking on options. And that is how you set up your whole thing. You don't have to know no coding. You don't have to know none of these things. Just like your phone, let's say you're trying to, um, let's say you're trying to create a contact in your phone. Once you click on contact, it, it's gonna, a template is gonna pull up for you to fill out, to enter the person's phone number name. That, that's exactly what Jira is all about. But the good news with this Jira and other tools is that they give you even more direction than your phone will give. It's that easy. It's really that easy. So let's try it out. Assuming that you have a project. So this is our project. Scrum Master Training is our project in level one. All right. Now, typically on the top, this area here, this is where you would find many, almost all of the options on menu and the left side. Like if you come on this board and you're not sure what to click, where to go, you want to play around things up front right here and the left side is where you find many things. So just so you know, just like any website you go to, it's the same thing. And now we have this project. As a team, we need a product backlog and we already have, actually have one, a product backlog here because as I installed this tool, they, work, they directed me on, okay, is your team a Scrum or Kanban team? I selected Scrum. And then they walk you through the steps of, um, you know, creating a Scrum project. Once you create a Scrum project, a, a product backlog will automatically pull up for you. Most things in here are automatically installed for you. This is our backlog here. Even though in here it's called backlog, but this is a product backlog. So right now we are in a product backlog view the top bar. Now I want to show you how to create a sprint. And then secondly, I will show you how to create a, a work item, like a user story, for example. That's what we want to achieve right now. So to create a sprint, you click on this create sprint button. As you click on the create sprint button, So now, because I already created sprints 1.12, and this naming convention you see here is based on the month that we are in. We are, this, this 12 it really stands for December. It's just a naming convention. It doesn't really mean anything. And then this sprint 0 0.1 is our first sprint as, um, as a November uh, a December cohort. So this is our first sprint, like I explained. Our first sprint is to complete chapter 1 to 4, which is a two weeks you know, worth of work. And then a second sprint, this is it right here. I already created it. As you see, it's, it's, it's just labeled 2.12, which they gave this 12 really stands for December cohort. And then right now, because I only clicked on create sprints, now Jira has assumed that it should be 12.13, you see. So it's automatically naming it for you. But if that's not what you want, all you have to do is edit it. Click on this little pencil button here the whole template will open for you. And then I don't want no sprints 2.13 because there is nothing like that. So our next cohort will be sprints 1.1 1. because it's going to be January next year. See, 1.1. 1. 1. And then 
duration of sprints. So all you have to do is it opens this template for you and you only click on them and select your options. That is it. So if you click on this drop down button, you should be able to select your sprint duration. And our sprint duration is two weeks. That's it. In another case, let's say if this is Azure DevOps, once you, let's say you start a whole new project, you create a whole new project and then you create, you're creating sprints, you create like three sprints and you continuously select a duration of two weeks. Moving forward after three sprints, Azure DevOps will assume that your sprints is two weeks. And then when you open this, it automatically selected the two weeks for you. Just like it assumed the name for us right here, that's what it does. And again, if it's not, if it doesn't work for you, all you have to do is change it. That's all. And now you have to enter your sprint duration. So to enter sprint duration, again, click on, on that here and then just select the date. Um, our second sprint is going to end on, as first sprint started on the 1st of December and ended on the 14th. Second sprint started on the 15th and it's going to end. So it's a two week sprint. It's going to end on the 28th. A third sprint is going to start on the 29th, you see, because it's a two weeks, that's the iteration. But I'm not going to put the 29th here because the next training is actually starting on the 3rd. It's actually starting on the 3rd of December. See, so that's the only reason why I'm selecting this. But normally, in your work environment, you will your two weeks will be like that. You will not just, unless you discuss as a team that, oh, because of holidays, you know, people will be out. Um, we should we should um, actually adjust our cadence to start our sprints on the third because that's when most team members will come back. That is kind of the line of conversation that happens in real life. You know, I actually just created a video today to discuss what I just said on on YouTube because many Scrum masters on our uh, community of practice have been asking this question like, "Oh, Karen, most of my team members are going to be out for the holiday." And so how, what are, how are we going to do? Because the, we only have like two team members that are not taking any time off. And we, we, we just two team members, we cannot achieve any done increment. And then I'm like, okay, have a conversation with them. If they're okay with adjusting their sprints, maybe they can extend their, their, their current sprint, the sprints that will lead up to the 24th of December. They can extend it to be three weeks. And then after that, you can reset and start on a new cadence, like from the third of, of, of your new year. You know, just have that conversation with them and hear what they have to say. So I actually made a video on that so that uh, you can help many people so that people will not keep reaching out to me individually. It's difficult. Yeah, so now in our own case as well, our new cohort is going to start on the 3rd of January. So that's why I'm going to select this third as the start of the new sprint. And then as I've selected the third, Jira has automatically adjusted the date for me. You see, I don't have to go select the end date of the sprints because I put two weeks here. So Jira now calculated the, the so what would two weeks be? What would the date be? And it, Jira has automatically put the date in there for me. You see, so I don't have to do anything. And then here is where you enter the sprints goal. This field here is where you enter your sprints goal. And once you're done with that, that's all. You have your sprints. Now that we have our sprints, this is our sprint right here. Not the one we just created, actually, the one that I already created. So we have to plan the sprints. So normally, best practice, before we are coming to sprints planning, we already want all those stories in our product backlog prioritized and ranked. But the stories that we will be planning right now, I didn't create those stories because I want us to create it together. So we're going to be creating chapter one to four as our individual user stories. So how do you create a story? This is the last thing that I want us to achieve right now. So does this make sense? Okay. Yeah, so again, please, um, if you haven't downloaded that Jira on your device, please do. And just come in, come go to create a project and play around it, you know, just to get yourself familiar with at least understanding where to find your product backlog, how to create a user story, how to create a sprint. These are the standard things that you, even if you don't have to be doing these things when you start working, but it's very important that you know, because 
you realize that you'll be working with teams that they don't know how to do it. So you have to guide them on how to do it so that they can pick it up from there. All right, that's all. I'm going to stop sharing.